Welcome back to Hot Water Wrestling, and I just wanted to come on and talk about the current WWE product pretty much. Um, on Monday, we had the John Cena Brock Lesnar contract signing on the Raw Three Hour Super Show. I've seen around the internet a lot of people complaining and saying they don't have an interest in Lesnar and all sorts of negativity uh, towards the WWE product, their current product right now. And I just have to say, are you crazy? You know, a lot of the complaints that the wrestling community had um, are being addressed now. You know, all the things we were complaining about, me too, back in 2008, 2009, 2010, are all being, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are being addressed right now. Um, let's go to the main one. That's John Cena, okay? I mean, I don't know what planet you're living on, but John Cena's character as of WrestleMania, pretty much, has never been, how, sorry, well, hasn't been this interesting in a very long time. I mean, they are finally making his character interesting. Him losing to The Rock set off set him off in a whole new direction. He, he's got to, like, fight back up to the mountain. You know, that's what I said when it happened, um, and I was right, because that's what they're doing with him. He's got to crawl back to the top and bring Brock Lesnar in here, just throwing the spoke in the wheel. Um, it's, you know, it's amazing. It's just come out of nowhere. Um, the content on WWE programming on Raw has been considerably darker than it has been in a very long time, closer to that of the attitude area, uh, area <laughs> era, okay? A little more intense, a little more serious. Um, John Laurinaitis, love him or hate him? Most people hate him, I hate him too, but you know what? He's actually turning out to be great on TV. He's a great villain, he's a great GM, he's interesting. Um, I'm very interesting, uh, interested in the product. I can't talk today for some reason. <laughs> but I'm very interested in the product right now. I think it's fabulous. I think it's great. I think things are going to get even better. Um, I'm very excited for this year, 2012 with WWE. Hopefully, they're going to put some of the goofiness they've had the last three, four years behind them. Um, and this brought, you know, Brock Lesnar coming back is, 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 is going to really help do that. So you guys need to get out there and support the product today. I, I, I don't understand this negativity. I, I really don't understand what you want. Who on the roster is going to be more entertaining than Brock Lesnar? Okay? It's not Batista. I mean, if you guys, you know, Batista puts me to sleep, okay? I don't dislike Batista. I think Dave Batista is cool, you know, whatever, but he's just, he's not my cup of tea. He, he, you know, he, he really has never been, if he was back in the company, that would be fine with me. I'm not trying to contradict myself, but I'm just trying to say that he, he you know, he doesn't blow my skirt up. He really never has, you know. Um, I've always been a big Brock Lesnar fan. I think it's very cool he's back. Some people said that his mic work sucked uh, Monday. I thought his mic work was awesome. Um, I thought he did a great job with his demands on John Laurinaitis and, and sitting there. I mean, he just looked like a really nasty son of a bitch out there. Um, I'm just really excited. I, I, you know, the Backlash card, I guess the Extreme Rules card, a lot of repeat matches from WrestleMania. I'm going to do my predictions in another video. But I'm definitely going to see that, that pay-per-view. I think everyone needs to get out there and order that pay-per-view and put your money where your mouth is. Send a message with your money. Don't steal the pay-per-view. Don't stream the pay-per-view. Buy the pay-per-view. Even if you got to pool together with some friends, please, please buy the pay-per-view. Let's keep WWE on this track. You know, uh, wrestling is always evolving, okay? So just because you're not completely happy with everything now, look at all the good that's come out of it. Look at the change for the better. Okay? It's more intense. It literally is more intense. And, and, you know, look at what they've built here. You know, the Daniel Bryan character, that's awesome. Brock Lesnar, awesome. Even Sheamus, for God's sakes, has never been better. You know? And John Cena, for God's sakes, someone who's just been so complacent 
for the last few years finally has a purpose and something to fight for. And that in itself is fantastic. And look at CM Punk. And this guy's held on to the WWE Championship forever. Um, you know, he might have to drop it here at Extreme Rules, but uh, God, got to take my hat off to him. And him and Jericho have worked a great program. So I, I don't know what else you want. You know, I, I, I think that you Dolph Ziggler fans out there and you Miz fans out there, don't you worry one bit, okay? Um, those guys are going to be fine. They're going to have their day. They're going to be back in the fold. Don't even worry about it. Those guys are good. And if I remember correctly, everyone was complaining about Randy Orton being boring and Randy Orton the Viper. Well, you got your wish because guess what? Orton has been really a non-factor for like a year, okay? They haven't given him all these belts and all this, well, maybe not a year, but at least like, you know, seven, eight months since his program he worked for Christian, which was quite some time ago, he hasn't really had much relevance. And I'm cool with that too, because I was stale on, on Randy Orton's character as well. And, and, it's, and it's not like the company has just made everything about Orton and we're seeing the same crap that we saw over and over again in the past years. We're seeing some new stuff. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that Orton's going to be right back in the fold. But um, I, I just want everyone to step back and look at this. And I mean, if you're going to send a message to Vince McMahon, you'd rather see Hornswoggle and Santino running around every goddamn Monday Night Raw and, and, and you're not going to care, then we're just going to have crap, okay? If you send the message that, yes, Vince, you're doing a good job. You're out, out, out there getting Brock Lesnar. You're getting the rock. You're making it intense. You're making it more edgy. You know, you got John Lord Niners, who's a complete sack of shit out there pissing everybody off. That, that's what we need, you know? That's what we need. We don't need this powder puff crap that they've given us a lot of, you know? And, and look, we're gonna hit our bumps in the road. There's highs and lows in the wrestling season. You know what I mean? That's, that's all year, it's not really a season, but there's highs and lows in wrestling. You know, you're always gonna get downtime. There's always gonna be periods where it's kinda, <laughs> but man, seriously, man, grab on tight. Cause this is some good stuff. You know I mean? Wade Barrett, I like him a lot. When he comes back, I think he's going to work some great programs. Even Ryback out there, Skip Sheffield's come back as Ryback. That guy reminds me of someone from like the late 90s. Like, of course, good old Rhino. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I am really happy with what's going on in WWE. I was going to kind of stop watching wrestling after um, WrestleMania. And what I mean by stop is I'm just going to take a little break probably until maybe Money in the Bank or SummerSlam or something. You know, I was going to kind of just chill out until maybe around July or August, get back into it, jump back into it. You know, I'd always check in and, you know, I got I can't stay away completely. And, I, and I'm not like some people coming on and be like, I'm never watching again and I ain't done here. No, and, you know, when I say take a break, I just mean just take a little hiatus, take a little break, a, a planned vacation from wrestling. Um, but no, they sucked me right back in when they brought Brock Lesnar back. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to see him out there. And I know he's not going to be a full-time guy on the show all the time, but that's good too. You know, I've said in some of my videos that they should do that with every superstar. Everyone on the roster, they, they, they shouldn't always have to be on television. It's more special when you bring people back, like Randy Orton and John Cena for, you know, those are two examples, or Dolph Ziggler or um, CM Punk, okay? It's more special if they're not there every week, because when they're there every week, they have to find something to do every week, and thus it gets a little boring. If guys were not on television every single week, then the people who were on television that week could really work programs of substance, you know, really give you something to bite off instead of just calling it in and getting through the show because they're on this week and next week and all the time and they always have to think of something to do. Instead of having to think of something to do every single week, why not think of really cool things to do a couple times a month and make them 
quality instead of quantity. Quality over quantity is always better in every situation, okay? You're always gonna come out ahead with quality over quantity. It's just it's the way the world works. And uh, so I'm fine that The Rock's not on full time. And I'm fine that Brock's not on full time. And I think it's great. I, I really do. I hope they do bring Batista back for a little while. That's good too. Throw another guy in there. Get him in. Maybe we get lucky. Stone Cold comes back. You know, we're, they're still pushing a lot of the young guys. I think that's fabulous. You know, um, like I said, the younger guys are going to be just fine. Don't you worry. The cream will rise to the top. Just, you know, keep watching. Dolph Ziggler will have that WWE strap around his waist at some point this year. I'm almost certain. Um, and if he doesn't, it's going to be for a damn good reason in that it's going to be a great program with Brock Lesnar or The Rock or CM Punk and John Cena and it's going to, or maybe Dave Batista and someone's going to be in there. They're going to be up in the mix. Um, it's just going to be a good year. I really think it's going to be a good year. I just had to come on and say my two cents that I think you guys are absolutely nuts to be on air complaining or bitching about WWE right now. Um, it's never going to be perfect, okay? There's a lot of things from the Attitude Era that I did not like. And at the time, I did not, you know, the over, uh, the skits, the backstage soap operas, the real over-the-top stuff, um, I always thought was kind of, like, silly. Um, even, like, you know, was it Triple H, I think it was? Or was it Kevin Nash? Oh, crap, I can't even remember now. It's been so long. But when they went to Brian Pillman's house and he had the ankle injury and they beat him up or uh, when The Undertaker and, or was it, oh God, man, I'm drawing a blank, but when they were stalking someone's wife on there, I know Diamond Dallas Page stalking uh, The Undertaker's wife, I think it was, or I don't know shit. I got too much on my mind right now, but all those like over the top skits, I was like, this is, you know, uh, I was never in love with that, you know, and everyone looks back at the Attitude Era saying it's the greatest thing in the whole world. And, and you know what? It very well could be the greatest thing in the whole world. There was a lot more good things about the Attitude Era than bad things. But my point is, is that it's never going to be 100% perfect. It's never going to be 100% tailored to you. And part of wrestling is keeping the fans guessing, keeping people not getting comfortable. As you, as you know, I mean, look at the way Vince runs the company. No one is comfortable ever. Even the top superstars, he doesn't let anyone get comfortable. He's on top of everyone all the time in his own way, in their own way. He's moving and it's shaking and it, it's like hot potato. And it's like that for the fans. You're never comfortable. The minute you think you're comfortable and you're like, yeah, we're gonna sit back and whoa, it's blowing out of there, you know? And so that's the way it is. If you haven't figured that out by now, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I see a huge improvement in WWE programming from the last few years. We need to embrace that. Send a message to Vince with your money. Buy extreme rules, buy extreme rules. Tell your friends, please, buy, 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 buy. Okay, let's 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 keep this going. Because if not, then you know they might just fall back into what we had the last few years. And I have a lot of complaints about the last few years. It had its moments. You know, CM Punk when he dropped the pipe bomb, and he had that fabulous match with John Cena at Money in the Bank, and had that title run. You know, that was the beginning of all of this. And it's just been getting better and better and better, in, in my opinion. I just want to keep it going. So that's my two cents about Brock Lesnar's return, extreme rules, the current product. Keep it going. Keep watching, and I'll see you next time on Hot Water Wrestling.